Hey, 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 what's going on YouTube and welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. I want to say thank you for clicking on this video. In today's video, we are going to talk about sensitive information types within Microsoft Purview. So hopefully you guys are on the Purview screen. I am on the Purview screen right now. You can easily get here by signing into the portal and going to your compliance.microsoft.com so you can view what's on the screen. Now, one thing I will tell you is when it comes to Microsoft Purview or anything within Office 365, or I should say Microsoft, they are constantly making changes. So this video is being created um, in 2024, in September of 2024, and hopefully um, the screen still looks the same, the graphical user interface is the same, but there's a good chance that they've changed things around. So what I'm gonna show you, you can still use later on, Microsoft tends to just change where things are located within the 365 portal, but the principles and the foundation of how you go about and executing whatever you're trying to do and accomplish, in our case, a custom sensitive information type, then there you would still be able to do it. So here we are. I'm going to come over here. As you can see, I'm getting bothered about check out the new Microsoft portal screen. I'm not going to do it in that one. I don't really care to use it yet until they force me to. Right. So what I will be doing is I'm going to come over here to data classification and I can click on classifiers right here. When I get the classifiers, I will get this screen that's going to show me trainable classifiers, sensitive info types, and EDM classifiers. So what we're concentrating on is in the middle, which is the sensitive information type. Now, once you click on the sensitive information type, you'll see these two um, options down here. You have the create sensitive info type, which is what we're going to be doing. And then you also have the create fingerprint based SIT which is going to be the sensitive information type. So let's, you know, perhaps you got on this page because you are new to 365. Perhaps you're trying to go for your SC400, your data information protection uh, certification, or perhaps that you just got a new position and you have to figure out how are you going to make sure your data is safe within the Microsoft portal right in your ecosystem so let's first start talking a little bit and defining what a sensitive information type is so what is a sensitive info type right so sensitive information types are pattern based classifiers they detect sensitive information like social security your credit card or bank account numbers to identify sensitive items uh, within Microsoft Purview, uh, they provide you three ways of identifying items that, so that it can be classified. So you have your manual by users. You also have a via automated pattern recognition as with sensitive information types. Then you also have your via machine learning as well. So within your, your sensitive information types can be used in Microsoft Purview for data loss prevention policies. Uh, sensitive sensitivity labels, retention labels, insider risk management, communication compliance, auto labeling policies, and Microsoft Priva. Okay, so out of the box, Microsoft provides you a bunch of sensitive information types that you can use. So you have your ABA route in, which is one that you can utilize. It will give you some feedback about you know how that's looking and what you're doing there. If I come back over here, I have full names, I have physical address. Uh, depending on where you're at, you could put in your location. We have stuff for Azure here. There's a lot of different sense for information types here, credit card numbers, so on and so forth. So um, down here, you'll see it's a publisher's Microsoft that has the type, the entity type, um, and then it also has the name of it. So what we're going to do is we're really going to concentrate in this video is to create the sensitive inf info type. Now, I'm not going through this create fingerprint-based uh, sensitive information type. I, to be honest, I haven't really seen it used too much. Uh, so basically, the fingerprint-based sensitive information type is basically allowing your documents to be have a fingerprint associated with it. So obviously, your document can't have a fingerprint, but that is exactly how they explained it. What, it, it's, what it's really supposed to detail is the uniqueness of that document, right? Everybody has... Uh, every human being has a fingerprint that is unique to them. Same thing as the document. So what you're doing when it comes to the fingerprint-based sensitive information type is you're uploading a document 
Perhaps it is a document that is used as a template. Like you might be onboarding certain uh, information when it comes to customers, or you may be onboarding information based on staff and employees at your organization. And you want to make sure that any document that is similar to it is deemed as sensitive because you might be asking people for their credit card, their social, their home address, all this information that really needs to be protected. So that's what the fingerprint based SIT is. So just a real quick run through of that. Uh, but that's not really what this video is for. In this video, we're going to go through the create sensitive info type. So go ahead and click on that. So what we're going to do with the sensitive information type, we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a keyword, but I'm going to do something similar to, I'll just say customer keyword, right? And this, I could put whatever information I could say, uh, information that needs to be protected for our customers. Now I'm making something up here. I didn't really think about that before making this video about what I would write in the description, but I did know I was going to do the customer keyword. So patterns, at least one pattern needs to be required. So it needs to see what kind of pattern it should be looking for. So let's go through this menu one by one. So first is the confidence level. So you have three options when it comes to confidence level. You have your high, the match must strictly meet the pattern criteria. This has the possibility to lead to false negatives. So just so you know, um, if you're doing it this way, it's going to be very strict and sometimes it may allow something to go through, which it should not, right? So those are the false negatives, right? Where it really should be a positive. Now you have the medium, which is less strict. The match criteria are moderately specific. Then you also have low, the match criteria are broad and may yield false positives. So the high you'll get false negatives, the low you can may get a chance again, false positives. Now, one thing I would tell you is you got to play around with this setting a little bit because sometimes you may just be like, oh crap, this doesn't work or this went through. So I would definitely say test it out because every organization is different. Everybody has different documents, all that other sort of stuff. So um, I like to just play it safe by going medium. So we're going to go medium on this one. And then right here, primary element, it says add a primary element. So we have four options that we can choose from. So the four items that we get to choose from are regular expressions, normally also known as regex. Use regex to define patterns. For example, BD slash 5B could detect a five digit employee ID. Uh, you have keyword list, right? Where the final list of keywords to detect. This could be terms like confidential, internal use only, etc. Then we have the keyword dictionary, create a dictionary of terms specific to your organization. And you can use that where it's like a document or some type of file system that you're using and you're pulling information and you have some type of table. Um, that would really be a great way of utilizing that. And then you also have functions, which is built in that you can use. So we're going to come here and we're going to go to keyword list, um, enter the keyword list name, and we'll just call this customer info. And this one here is case sensitive. So enter keywords separated by a new line. Each keyword is limited to 50 characters and casing isn't a factor when determining the matches. So I could do something like a uh, credit card. I could do credit underscore card because sometimes some systems don't like the spaces. So there's an underscore there. I could do first name. I could do full name. I can do customer ID, right? But this isn't case sensitive. But then you also have the case sensitive ones where you would have to do customer underscore ID where it's looking for exact match, right? So word match, string match, all that other good stuff you can put down there. You can add another keyword group if you wanted to, you don't have to, and I could go done, right? So now what we have here is primary element customer uh, uh, keyword list, right? So now if I came here and I said, all right, matter of fact, I'm going to take this because I don't want to lose this and I'm going to come down here and I can change it and I could do keyword dictionary. Now for keyword dictionary, you'll see something like this and I can now say customer info and I could upload a document, right? So remember what we were talking before with the PowerPoint, 
Keyword dictionary, create a dictionary of terms specific to your organization. This is good for terms not commonly used outside your organization. So if you wanted to, let's say you had a database that you were utilizing, you can say, okay, I have a lot of fields in that database. I can use that as a way to uh, make sure that I have a sensitive info type because I know I'm asking for this information. So if you look at this uh, Excel document that I created, I have a few fields over here, which is customer name, customer ID, credit card, credit card underscore, uh, credit underscore card, order numbers, so on and so forth. So this can be used to upload as that dictionary as a CSV or a file that has all that uh, pertaining information. And we would come up here and we just upload if we wanted to or a CSV, we can do that as well. Now I'm gonna come out of here because I wanna to keep to my primary element, which is the customer um, information. So I'll just do info and I'll come here, put that back and I'll click done. Now you have character proximity, which is next. So character proximity, what that's gonna do is settings define how close the primary element must be to other supported elements, like a keyword or another regex match to qualify a match. For example, if looking for employee ID number near the word payroll, you could set the proximity to 50 characters. So right here, it has it within 300 characters, or you can choose this option, which is anywhere in the document. Now we'll leave it to 300 characters, but that's totally up to you. As you can see, this can get changed so much, right? Then you have support elements, add support elements or group elements. So exactly what the name is are optional additional checks to increase confidence that the detected item is sensitive information. So if you wanted to do something else, you could do another reg regular expression, you could do another keyword, you could do any of these or whatever you wanna do. It's totally up to you. And then you also have additional checks, which as well, it says exclude specific values, starts or doesn't start with characters, so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna click on create. And right here, I have pattern one. If I wanted to do another pattern, I could click on this and I could start and go through this whole thing again and create another pattern. Now, I'm not gonna do that. I could have just done it this way and added an element, did a keyword dictionary and uploaded my Excel document. And then that way I would have something else as well. So there's different ways of you going about doing that. And then I will click next. And then it says, hey, choose a recommended confidence level to show on compliance policies. So right now it says medium confidence level, but let me come back here. Let me go back here and edit this, go to high and click update. And now let me go to next. And now it shows high confidence here. So it's going to go to where you want it to go to. I know I told you medium, we'll leave it as high for now because this is obviously just for testing and information purposes, which is perfectly fine. And then I'll click on next. And then we have sense if we'll type name is going to be customer keyword and I will click create. So your sense info type is created. And that is pretty much it. And that's how you go about creating a custom uh, sensitive information type. So I hope that the information I provided you uh, was beneficial. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, please leave it down in the comment section below. I appreciate you watching this video. Um, I have tons of other videos within Azure and the Office 365 space. So please feel free to browse through my channel and take a look um, and see if there's anything there that would help you out. So I want to thank you again for watching. Uh, once again, my name is Kieran Tross here at Cloud Scholars. My goal is to get you from scholar to consultant and, of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.